data is the new oil. It's an oft repeated phrase, but it's all to do with resources. The power of data is undeniable, and that's why the systems for collecting, storing and processing it are under ever increasing scrutiny. The not-for-profit association Gaia-X thinks the answer lies in decentralization and a common standard for trust. I'm Rosanna Lockwood and I'm in Davos where I sat down with CEO Francesco Bonfilio to learn more. Francesco Buonfilio, CEO of Gaia X. It's fantastic to have you sitting here with us in this beautiful sunshine in Davos in Switzerland. Uh, appreciate you coming all this way. There's so much I want to know about uh, Gaia X and what you're trying to achieve with the firm. But uh, first of all, I've just got a question about the name. Where does it come from? Well, the name Gaia, many people ask the question. Actually, I cannot tell you who decided the name, but I can tell you the name Gaia is the name of uh, the goddess of fertility. You might ask why, given this is a technology economical initiative, but Gaia uh, as, a, as a goddess of fertility is the ambition of the Gaia X project to make Europe new economy, data economy uh, flourishing. So that's the reason of it. You know, I've heard you describe it as a technological initiative. Uh, I've heard it described as a data ecosystem, a non-for-profit association. How would you describe GAIA-X? It's a very good question. I need to step back to the origin of it. Uh, the origin of GAIA-X was actually in 2019, not many people know, and it, it used to be a governmental project started by Germany and France. Uh, actually, it was started by Germany, but it became a Franco-German project all as a sudden. So Chancellor Merkel and uh, the former Minister of Economy, Peter Altemeyer, and uh, uh, President Macron and uh, Minister Bruno Le Maire, the, the Minister of Economy of France, they decided they needed to react some ways, somehow. And you might remember we had the Trump administration, which was a very strong, uh, sovereign push from the United States. And at that time, there was a strong awareness of the importance of technology, in particular of cloud technology, as the backbone of our economy. So the awareness of those governments was we need to do something to regain sovereignty on, on our cloud technology. Otherwise, we will be hostage of somebody else's technology. And uh, it's not just US, it's international because we are not against any specific country. Sovereignty is a right of any country, and it has to be, um, let me say, um, a technology project, but with a clear impact on economy. So it's a pretty complex kind of uh, endeavor that you need to understand. It's, it is a complex endeavor. So if you were to, I, under, I see the history now. What does it do? What, in effect, is Guy X trying to achieve when it comes to things like cloud and data? Well, Guy X is trying to achieve uh, a very important objective. So reduce the dependency from non-controllable technologies. We might discuss about the, uh, the truth of the, this statement. How controllable are the technologies we are using today? But the truth is that most of the technologies we use today are hyper-concentrated, black-boxed, non-interoperable, non-controllable. So in order to use those technology, those technologies, you have to trust them. The effect is that the level of adoption of cloud in Europe is below 25%. So nowadays, we are not missing technologies. We are missing the necessary trust to start using those technologies at scale to build real new digital economy. We are totally missing this trust because we don't see inside the boxes. We don't see inside those black boxes. What GAIAX is trying to achieve is the definition of a new standard for trust, which is basically what uh, we define as transparency, controllability, and interoperability of digital services. Do you think that's going to be more of a challenge in terms of worldwide expansion that GAIAX is 
to overcome that idea that it is a European cloud or a European directive. Um, because obviously you talked about trust there. Trust can be at the consumer level regarding companies, tech companies, cloud companies, but also at governments. So if they feel like a government is creating the form of regulation, uh, say you wanted to operate or, or help share GAIA-X in Asia, do you think you would have an issue in getting them to understand that it's not a sort of European regulation? U European regulation and regulation in general is part of the game. In other words, um, let me put it in a different way. We are trying to regulate something that is really tough to be regulated. Yes. Technology is, is you know, un intangible. It's difficult to control it. You know, data, you copy the data and you're stolen it. It's not like a physical thing. So you can regulate as much as you want, but you cannot, you know, avoid. For example, um, you cannot avoid cyber attacks, you cannot avoid um, risks that we, we all know nowadays. So regulation is, is an important aspect, and we must have regulations. And Europe is leading in the world in terms of regulation. All the countries have the same rights and needs. Transparency, controllability, interoperability is definitely a need for everyone. Regulation will have to follow those needs, and that, that's actually what not just Europe, but all the, all the other countries are doing in that regulation. But what is missing, again, is a technology framework that helps bridging the gap between regulations and technology. In other words, and I keep using this joke, we would like to move uh, or to enable a paradigm shift from technology regulation, tech reg, into um, regulation uh, technology, reg tech. So the rec tech approach is what GAIAX is endorsing and developing. It's not replacing the regulation, but it's bridging the gap. Otherwise, regulation will increase like entropy in the universe, mm -hmm. but the physical capability to implement it or verify it will be limited by definition. And this is not helpful. Yeah, decentralization and automation arguments, of course, have been applied to various uh, technologies around the world, including uh, finance. It's interesting to hear how it could work in this sense and how it's potentially more trustworthy than humans, as you said there. And talking about trust, because uh, I feel like we've covered so much ground already, but we haven't gone into that in detail. You were talking a little bit about fear earlier on, but also how you build public trust in the way that data is used and managed, etc. cetera. Um, what would a world without this kind of, uh, not regulation, but system look like? Uh, because sometimes the best way to gain people's trust is to scare them, right? Well, let's talk about what the world will be without what we're trying to do. And I hope that anyone else do it. But so far, GAIAX is the most advanced project in the world trying to achieve this result. So we have captured the need of developing some trust mechanisms. We have, well, to, to develop, we, we captured the need to, to define some common trust, digital trust definitions. We captured the need to implement this trust mechanisms, verifications in technology. And we uh, decided we are not just writing paper, but we are doing something. We are developing something. Without what we are doing, what would be the world like? Well, let's step back to the origin of GAIAX, why GAIAX was born. The scare and the fear at the time GAIAX was conceived is not gone. It's even worse. Uh, Let's make the example, uh, we were talking about that before. People understand how important is having dependency from a single source, like gas. We all understood how um, dangerous is having a dependence of natural gas from a single country like Russia. Now, think about technology. The dependency on technology is pervasive. Our lives, our economy, our industry, our hospitals, streets, schools, utilities, water, gas, everything, economy, banks, financial institutions, everything runs on digital platforms. 80% of our data and industrial data run on technology platforms that run the risk to become a de facto regulator. This is why digital sovereignty is in the agenda of every government. Because a government 
rules a state, and a state is a sovereign entity. Sovereignty is not a technology concept. It's a, it's, you know, it's a legal concept, if you want, um, and has to deal with laws. So you are sovereign if you have your own laws and you apply it laws. But if you have a technology that actually can work around your laws, you lose sovereignty. So without digital sovereignty, we cannot rule our countries, our lives, our economy. Without a new generation of trustworthy uh, technologies, we won't be able to leverage the power of data. We have much more data than we know, and we are leveraging just the tip of the iceberg, just less than 20% of the data we have. It's a bold vision. Before we wrap up the conversation, I just want to bring it back to the setting and why you're here in Davos, in Switzerland. Obviously, this place is usually the setting annually for the World Economic Forum. We know what that means. It's the political leaders of the world coming together to try and solve global challenges. Many of the European Union officials and uh, world leaders you've already spoken about, this year they're meeting under the theme cooperation in a fragmented world to uh, try and stave off another decade of inaction or inactivity. Um, talk to me about cooperation. Why is it so important in the world of what you do? That's the perfect translation of what we're trying to do in a bigger scope. Because fragmentation has always been the very nature of Europe, but now everybody realizes it's not just Europe. Uh, think about European economy. 80% of European economy is small medium business, which means nobody can survive alone. No one in a value chain can survive alone. So the only way to survive is to uh, transform the fragmentation from a weakness into um, a competitive advantage. How you do that? Cooperation. You need to join the dots. You need to make sure the small ones can play together to build big things. But in order to do that, we need cooperation and we need to avoid fragmentation at all levels, at governmental levels, at industrial levels, and technology level, uh, of course, as well. So we are trying not just to solve the problem of technology, but we are trying to solve the problem of technology with our trust framework, with our digital clearinghouses, with the marketplaces that we will enable. That's tangible. We can only hope that we see that level of cooperation at the World Economic Forum this year and heading forward. Uh, but for now, here in Davos, in Switzerland, Francesco Bonfilio of Gaia X has been fascinating to listen to your thoughts. Thank you. My pleasure.